Hi and welcome. If you are running one of these modern two-piece cranks where the axle is attached to one of the cranks and then the other just attached, I will show you a simple check that you should do on a regular basis, once per month or even more frequently if you ride a lot of miles, to prevent any sort of catastrophic failure and, and injury. Those are things that even a helmet may not prevent uh, or protect you from. So I will show first what I'm doing, then I will explain the risks and then I will show you the exact procedure of, of how it's done. So let's first uh, skip right to it. Uh, by the way, Shimano's uh, design is probably the best from the engineering standpoint, but overall the two-piece crank system modern is not bad in terms of performance and weight and uh, safety compared to, for example, the square taper where you cannot do any preventive maintenance or checks in any reasonable way, but here you can and here I'll show you what I'm doing. So then I will explain it step by step. Okay, now I will explain what I'm doing and move the camera to show everything and it takes just a few minutes, uh, perhaps a minute more if you try to protect your frame. I will show also that. So, the thing is, this is, uh, if you don't buy the high-end stuff that's uh, super light and every millimeter of material is removed to make them super light, the mid-range and low-end uh, Shimano, for example, two-piece cranks are reasonably safe and, they, safe and they have a lot of material. However, the way, sorry, the way these work is that they are pushed through the frame where you have the, the cups and the cups have bearings and these are the, the bearings with the, the insert for, in, in this case we are using Shimano. And this is how it sits, one is on, on one end, the other on the other end. And when it's all good, the bearing will nicely spin and the, the axle will not spin against the surface. However, if the bearing has a lot of play or gets stuff so that it spins roughly, then you can have some uh, other impacts on the axle itself apart from your pedaling. And for example, if the bearing gets binding and the, the axle gets turned against the, the inner bearing race. So you have, let me show you. So you get friction between here, this, the axle starts spinning against that, it's not just the outer bearing race uh, turning, or you get some play and rocking, that can cause the, the axle to wear, and it can break uh, without any warning, it will easily get uh, worn and then might break when you push, usually when you push pedal hard out of the saddle, and when that happens, the leg that you were pushing with will drop freely, uh, you will lose any sort of pedal resistance suddenly, and your bike will swerve sharply and suddenly in that direction and if you're going into oncoming traffic or someone is overtaking you or there's a cliff <clears throat> you can get seriously hurt and it's easy to prevent it just by making sure that your bearings are intact. The way to do that I will first explain what I'm doing then I'll move the camera to show exactly how. So the first thing that I do is to inspect the bearings for play. To do that I put one hand on one crank the other on the other and try to to rock them like this, it, they should always provide some resistance in any direction. If I can easily move them and feel some rocking, that's not good. And I do that on vertical and on horizontal and on a few other positions because sometimes bearings don't wear evenly, so at least uh, try them in, in two axes. That's the first thing. The second is that the, your uh, cranks should spin freely when there's no chain attached to them. I've moved the chain away, I'll show how I did that. <coughs> Sorry. When there is no chain, they can spin freely and you can see if there's any friction, you can feel it easily. You could remove the cranks and check the bearings by your hand for any binding, but if there is any significant binding that would cause the, the axle to spin uh, without the bearing really spinning, you will feel that even this way and that takes only one minute, so it's practical to do on a regular basis. 
However, uh, what I see many people make mistakes with regarding this, this is just a side note. The bottom bracket bearings take all your weight and force when you're pedaling, so they need a reasonable amount of preload. And uh, yes, it's not ideal that they put these uh, standard bearings, not uh, angled cone bearings on the bottom brackets. That's a separate topic for a separate video. The nonsense in the cycling industry. But even with those, you need a certain amount of preload because when you do not have preload, when you apply some force, torque, uh, because materials deform elastically, so they uh, bend a bit back and forth. W when you don't have enough preload, you will get play once you put some uh, force in it. So they should not spin too freely, just not feel any roughness in spinning. But compared to a wheel, I will spin them both at the same time to show you how much longer the wheel spins. I don't even have to do it at the same time. And this is the rear wheel, the front wheels can spin even, even longer. It's normal for the cranks to have some resistance and do not, to not spin as much as possible. It's important that you don't feel any roughness when they're spinning, but having some resistance is actually optimal and that's how it should be. When you put it on the road, it won't make any problems, quite the opposite. So that's the, the basic idea. Now let's, do, let's show what I am doing exactly. So. Regardless of whether you have a triple or a double or a one by, you could and should shift to the smallest sprocket in the rear to give your chain some slack to make it easier for you to work. So that's the first thing to do. Shift in the, to the rear, to the smallest. Don't do this, I'm a trained professional. And also if you have multiple chain rings in the front, shift to the smallest front chain ring. That will make it easier for you. On one by systems, you can remove the chain on the outside, let it hang, perhaps protect this from any chain scratching. But on most other bicycles with front derailleur, you can more easily put it away on the inner side. And that is what we will do. But first we will protect the frame from any scratching. Now I'll move the camera to show that part. Okay, now you will hopefully be able to see what's the, the interesting part and to prevent my frame from being scratched I can wipe this off, make it cleaner and put some masking tape on it to, to prevent any damage. That's what I could do for a start. Just try to stick it there and I will remove that once I'm done. I can put several layers if I wish to be really thorough and I'm really worried about scratching my bicycle or you could put a cloth there and then you will remove the, frame, the, the chain from the lower side you can easily get it to get out and place it there and that's it that's the whole procedure and now you can do everything that you need to do and then to return it you just get some slack of the chain and start from the upper side and gently put it up on or put it from the from the lower end which is a bit more awkward at least for me and that's it and then you can just make sure to not get your hands caught that's the whole video it's uh, more talk than uh, really work that you need to do uh, and I would advise that you do this on a, on a regular basis because it can prevent uh, any problems. And when I talk about these things, people, even mechanics, often say, well, that's never happened to me. I don't know of anyone who's had that happen. Uh, that's good. I I'm happy for you. I hope it never happens to you. As far as I'm concerned, I've seen uh, all sorts of mal malfunctions, breakdowns and everything. And what I can prevent without wasting too much time and effort, for me, it's uh, uh, not uh, reasonable to not do that check. I feel a lot safer, a lot better doing this uh, periodical check without having to disassemble everything so that I know it's all good. If I see any bearings binding, I will, of course, remove cranks, check out the bearings, see if they need replacing the, the bottom bracket cups. You usually buy them all together. And I will also inspect, when I do that, the, the axle for any wear and damage. But this is a simple procedure that I think it's, it's okay to, to, to 
work and do from time to time. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you liked it, uh, make sure to give it a thumbs up uh, and to subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in some other videos. If you have any comments or questions, you can use the bygremlin.net forum. It's a lot better than YouTube for dealing with uh, questions and answers and, and comments. And uh, you can support my work via Patreon. I want to thank the good people who are supporting my work. I don't uh, offer anything for money that you don't get for free. So the only reason for you to support me would be to help me make higher quality videos for everyone. That's, that's uh, the way I think it's, it's good and fair and that, that's how I roll. Uh, again, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, stay cool. I, I'll see you in some other video. Cheers. Thank you.